I'm starting on three, eh? I'm starting on three. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Daniel Aquista. I hope you had the most incredible weekend. It is a finally a motivational Monday right here on the show, and we're going to be focusing on different forms of safety today on the show. First of all, road safety. Second of all, beach safety. Looking after your skin when you're in the sun. Plus, if you've ever been in an emergency situation and need to perform CPR, we've got all of those details for you on the show today. But being the month of November and the last day of that month, you know, gents around the country have been trying to support all forms of uh, male diseases as they've uh, embarked on Movember. Today we show you how to groom that big mo fro of all of yours that you've created. And the ladies out there, make sure that your man's fro and mo is always looking on fleek. So we've got all of those details on the show today. The ladies aren't in the loft, but I am joined by uh, my favorite chef and food stylist, Claire Winstanley's then. She said it's too delicate to have me in the kitchen. What? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Afternoon Express. Yes, I'm Clement Stanley and I'm in the kitchen with my friend and the food editor of Taste Magazine, Abigail Donnelly. Oh, it's so divine to be with you, Claire. How we're going to cook it? together. We are going to yeah. bake together. What are we going to bake? <laughs> wait, wait. First of all, can I just tell you that you are officially opening up the festive cooking in the kitchen. Oh, wow. Um, well, a little bit of banana. I'm honoured. <laughs> I think Daniela is missing us. I know, he is. Yeah, I know. So, so today we're doing the cover of the latest Taste Magazine, which is celebrating Christmas. Oh. And just a little bit of difference. We've got lots of gammon and turkeys and all traditional things with a little bit of twist in the magazine. But for the cover, we just did something fresh. So it's minced meat ice cream. It's mm. so hot now, so it's really going to be great. And then sandwiched together with beautiful pale pink meringue. Oh, so beautiful ice cream sandwich. Easy peasy. That sounds delicious. <laughs> and if you want to get the recipe, go to afternoonexpress.co.za and find it. It's there, re ready and waiting for you. But for now, who's ready and waiting? Danny Lou on the couch. <laughs> Indeed I am. Make sure you guys get hold of us on our social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, and give us a call. 083-913-3728. We are live and would love to hear from you. Now, during the holidays, we spend a lot of time in the sun, which can be very harmful to our skin as well as to our children's skin. We often long-lasting, well, with often long-lasting harmful effects. Now, with us to give some tips to avoid and treat sun exposure for all types of skin is expert and skin therapist Penny Jenkins. Welcome to our loft. Thank you very much. Now, Penny, I think everyone's at home is going to be like, oh, here she goes. She's going to tell me to stay out the sun for the rest of my life, and I Ideally, don't want yes. to. <laughs> so, Penny, what exactly is skin exposure and sun exposure? All right, so most people think they're only going to the sun when they go to the beach or when they're at the swimming pool or when they're playing outdoor sports. But actually, we're in the sun every single day. Driving yep. to work is sun exposure. Going to fetch your children is sun exposure. Um, so ideally, you should be using sunblock every single day, regardless of the weather. Sure. A lot of people have said, you know, that it's a bit of an inconvenience at times or certain amounts of sun exposure are good for your body with the vitamin D intake, etc. And I've heard lots of theories about what SPF actually means. Okay. What is an SPF factor? All right, so that's your sun protection factor. Most dermatologists will prefer an SPF of 50. Okay, all right. which means? Um, it gives you longer protection. So the lower the factor, the less protection time you have. Okay, so it's about time, not necessarily like the amount of protection. Time. Okay. And then it's also got to protect you against UVA and UVB rays. Yeah. But the secret with sunblock is to reapply it. Ah. It doesn't protect you all day. So regardless of the SPF factor, you need to reapply your sunblock. Yeah. I've seen in, in, in the stores all sort of sun, sunblock brands are trying to create products that make you feel like you apply it once and you're done. So you've seen water resistant, you've seen sports resistant, sweat resistant. Do those actually work? And what exactly should we be doing when we are wanting to go to the beach and swim and get out of the water, go into the pool, get out of the pool? If you're going to be outdoors and in the water a lot, zinc oxide is a better sun protection factor. Oh. But if you don't use zinc and you have titanium dioxide, you do need to reapply. So the minute you get out of the water, reapply your sunblock. Okay. If you've perspired, reapply your sunblock. Clinical studies, they put thick layers of sunblock on to, um, to show the efficacy. Mm. But in reality, we all put on as little as possible. Exactly. So it does not protect you the same way. <laughs> so how much of our body should we be covering in sun cream? 
whatever's exposed. Okay. So the, ideally is to wear protective clothing rather, so broad brimmed hat, long mm. sleeves, but if not, any exposed area should have sun protection on. Now, Penny, I'm going to have to play devil's advocate here because a lot of people want to go to the sun to get that beautiful golden tan. No one likes to be pale and pasty as they go through their lives, and I know people are going to be saying, but please, is there a way that I can still get a tan and not have to wear so much sun cream all the time? Okay, if you tan before 10 o'clock in the morning or after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that's safe. Okay. Ideally, you want to use self-tanning creams rather than, and you do not want to use a sunbed. Okay, because those are as dangerous, even more dangerous exactly than the sun. Exactly that, yeah. Okay, what about our children? All right, children under the age of one year should not be exposed to the sun at all. Okay, so keep them completely covered up with as Com much clothing as right, possible. Even if you take them to the beach and you've got a, an umbrella over you, they are still exposed to the sun because of the reflection. So children up until the age of 12 months should not be exposed to the sun at all. Sure. Um, and then after that, it's fine, as long as they've also got protective clothing on, hats. Yeah. Another thing that I've heard, Penny, is that darker skin tones need less sun cream or less sun protection no. factor. Um, is that true? No. Everybody needs the same amount of sun protection. Okay. Um, later on in life, you will see why you need that. So a dark skinned person can actually go darker if they don't use sufficient sunblock. Yeah. So they'll present, say, five or ten years down the line with melasma on their face yeah. or sunspots and freckles. Exactly. So regardless of your skin colour, if you're exposed to the sun, you need to have sun protection. I on. see. So you mentioned all of those things that we can notice future later on in our mm -hmm. lives. You've mentioned freckles and things, sunspots, etc. What are some of the effects of overexposure to the sun? All right. Overexposure, premature ageing, number one. So okay. you want to look beautiful, you want a tanned body, but you're going to pay for it later on in life, okay? <laughs> so no um, excess sun exposure. Okay. Um, you'll also notice by driving around, your right hand will have aged quicker than your left hand, mm. purely from sun exposure. Well, but besides aging, I'm sure there's things like cancer that you have to be worried about. Yeah. How do you know? How do you see that, oh, flip, okay. I'm about to get cancer? All right, so if you have a lesion or a rough spot that's not healing properly, see a dermatologist. If you're unsure of anything, a mole that's changed colour or changed shape, you need to see you a, need to a dermatologist. Ideally, you should see a dermatologist once a year for a general checkup. Okay. Things that you might think are inconspicuous or harmless can yeah. actually be Sometimes you will say, I pick up with a few freckles because that's normal sunspots pop up mm. when you're overexposed to the sun. Um, are those things we should be worried about if you're spotting sunspots? Those are fine as long as they're smooth and flat. Okay. If they're rough or raised, it's a precursor to cancer. Okay. And then you do need to have that sorted out. And finally, before I let you go, I have to ask the question. I get sunburnt all the time and I'm going to try not to in the future, I promise, okay. Penny. But once I am sunburnt, what do I do to treat that? Soothing gels like aloe. Um, that's probably your best bet. Okay, so just but moisturize. Keep moisturize it moisturized. and do not go into the sun again. Okay. I've okay? heard sun cream can also sometimes help it. But no, it just prevents Some more damage. Some do, if they've got antioxidants in. Okay. But ideally, something soothing and cooling. Okay, so if your baby's less than, uh, what she said, a, 12, year? a year old, make sure you keep them out of the sun. Always put sun cream on three times a day. Correct. Apply it again after you leave the water. Correct. I'm keeping these tips for the summer season, Penny, and hopefully my tan won't disappear. Otherwise, we'll have to see you next year for lots of treatments. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for joining us in the loft. It's such it's a, a pleasure, pleasure to have you with us today. South Africa, after the break, we're making festive ice cream sandwiches, and we're sharing some useful first aid tips for the holiday season. Don't go anywhere. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. Welcome back to Afternoon Express and we're back in the kitchen. Well, we're in the kitchen with Abigail Donnelly, food editor of Taste Magazine, and we are cooking the cover. <laughs> I'm very excited we about this. We haven't cooked a cover for a long time. We usually oh. cook inside, but they're so pretty and they're so easy and accessible. And, uh, and it's a festive cover. It's the holiday season coming up, so there's all sorts of goodness inside there. What exactly. else can we expect in the there's magazine? There's lots of treats. I mean, there's also there's the richness. There's the crunchiest roast potatoes ever. Oh, there's I the love best potato. layered raspberry and chocolate cake. Mm. Trifle. And there's also a fantastic story on leftovers. I mean, what to do with your gammon and what to do with your stuffing. Although there's never leftovers. Yeah, <laughs> never leftovers for me. And then there are the, as I said, the meringues. And of course, there's also um, just the most amazing roast turkey stuffing gammons with all different glazes. And then for something fresh, it's berry season. Oh, yeah. So it's packed with berries. Strawberries, yeah, so cherries. There's an ice cream berry cake that's all being loaded with cherries and raspberries and <gasps> strawberries. And yeah, so And we are stuff. giving away some taste magazines, but I'm going to give you more always. information 
about that in a minute. Let's get started. Where okay. do we go? So you've got four egg whites that you've kind of whipped up yes. with a little bit of caster sugar. 150, 170 grams of caster sugar. I'm the, I love making pavlovas. A lot of my friends say I'm kind of like the pavlova queen. And my trick That's is... That's a pretty cool title to yeah, have. I'm quite, I'm quite proud of that. Pavlova queen. So I can start so adding little bit by little here. bit. So you want to get it to about stiff peaks, right? Stiff, yes. Yeah. And then eventually the last kind of way of, of getting a good meringue is gloss. But my tip is to actually take the sugar mm. and gently heat it for a oh, little yeah. bit in, in a warm oven. And I, it just stabilizes somehow, and I just love it. So what I've got here as well is some fantastic um, vanilla. Can you ice see cream. those real specks of oh, vanilla? Oh, yeah, no, that's pure, beautiful. Pure, pure, good for your so ice the, cream. So the vanilla seeds just in there just exactly. kind of speckle yeah, and disperse yeah. all over the ice cream. And you don't have to. You can use any ice cream. You can use a pistachio. You can use a chocolate. You can use strawberry if you want. Stunning. I Absolutely love minced meat. This is a ready-made, beautiful one. Festive, spicy minced meat. So now, if we Full don't, fruit. if we don't to interrupt you there, no, if no, we don't want to use minced meat, what can we use? Because I know some people don't necessarily like they it. They don't. I love. I adore it. Love it. I used to make it with my gran, and I love it. Um, but you can use chopped peanut brittle. Mm -hmm. You can use those beautiful um, Kit Kats or Smarties if you want. Even fresh berries to make it fresh. Stunning. Or you can just keep it on on its own. Amazing. Or even just some uh, lovely those little packet of, of nuts. You know, and the, just kind of crush it up yeah, the, the sweet nuts, yeah. So, yeah. Am I adding this to yes, this? Yes, so a little bit. And again, these are pink. So just to get a I little bit of color. I wanted to keep it pink and really festive, just, just a little bit. Just give that a bit of a shake. Yeah, and that's the gel. But you can use just the normal pink or red food coloring. And you just want it gentle. You don't want too much. Okay, again, so then... If you wanted to keep it white, you could... Yeah, oh, and different fun. colors, yeah. like festive colors. You yeah. know, would you go red and green? Oh. Well, you could if you wanted to. I mean, why not? Make it your own. So what I've got here, it melts a little bit, but that's no problem because you're going to stick it back in the freezer, let it reset. Fantastic. And, and then scoop that up No, you don't have to stir later. it too much. You know, there can be chunks and everything. And now the meringue. What are we and doing with that? And the meringue. Okay, cool. So we're so going to make our beautiful little pavlovas by the go. pavlova queen. <laughs> so while you make your beautiful pavlovas, I did say that we were going to give away some of these Taste magazines. So we're giving away one of three one-year subscriptions to Taste magazine. How cool is that? And Fabulous. all you have to do is SMS the keyword taste your name and city to 33728 and you can stand a chance of winning it. T's and C's are on the website, afternoonexpress.co.za and SMS's cost 150. That's it. And you can win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so and just and you know these take about 15 minutes to cook. So make just little flat discs. You and know, you don't want puffy meringues. Yeah, if you put too much, yeah. it's going to puff up a little and bit. And you know, you can draw circles and you can make them perfect. The thing that I do is perfect, oh, so um, in the kitchen anyway. And then we're just going to take those <laughs> and sandwich them up. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Pop them in the oven, 150. So, yeah. while we pop those into the oven, or you, you can do the work. Oh, okay. I'll do it for you this time. <laughs> Danilo's waiting for us on the couch. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about how I feel handing over that kitchen to Claire. I must make sure that I give you some more safety tips. So ladies, have a listen. And as important as it is to avoid danger and keep your family safe, it is just as important to know what to do in a case of emergency. We're joined by Uva Ua, who's, I'm gonna, he's going to have to tell me how to pronounce that properly, <laughs> from Emergency Medical Training to give us some tips on basic first aid, which you can apply during the festive season if you or a member of your family finds themselves in a medical emergency. Uva, welcome to our loft. Pronunciation of your surname? Our. Our. Like 60 minutes. Yeah. Uva Our. That's it. So when you have children and stuff and it's time to do the chores, they're going to say Uva Our because they're going to have to hoover <laughs> for that hour. Oh, Juan. Yeah. Moving along swiftly. Everyone in their festive season wants to go out and be in the wild. They're either heading to the beaches, they're heading to the wild, to the forests, or to the mountains. And there are lots of opportunities for danger. Um, when it comes to something like bites, I know everyone wants to avoid insects. How do we avoid insects, bites, and treat them? Uh, avoiding insect bites, such as mosquitoes and things, uh, some kind of spray, such as uh, you get anti-insect sprays uh, and creams that you can rub on. Okay. Um, however, however, if you get bitten by that, you do get some kind of antihistamine creams and some lotions that you can put on specifically okay. for that purpose of relieving sure. the itching. And I'm sure there are different types of bites and no one really knows. They'll wake up with three in a row and be like, oh, it must be fleas. Or they'll wake up with one and know that it's mosquitoes. It'll start to become even bigger and bigger with a point in the middle. No, it's a spider. How do we treat spider bites differently to other kinds of bites? Spider bites, uh, <laughs> There are very few recorded uh, deaths from spider bites. A lot of people think, oh my goodness, I've bitten by a spider, I'm going to die. Um, <laughs> what, what I do? Same with snakes. Amputate, amputate. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we don't do Rambo first there, that's for sure. Okay. Um, I'll get into that just now. But uh, with, with spider bites, uh, you have to look out for um, sort of the signs and symptoms, uh, such as a swelling, burning sensation, um, and it, if it starts getting bigger or starts mm. spreading, mm. Uh, you'll start an open wound could form. Um, which in that case it would be, uh, you need to get some kind of treatment for that. So that you have to head to hospital for, for immediately? Sure. 
Okay, something like an open wound. Yes. Bleeding always happens uh, when, when it comes to sort of being in the wild. You get cut by a twig or something. And I'm always worried about covering it with my hand because I, I was told bacteria and things like that. What is the best way to treat an open wound or bleeding? Active bleeding, uh, the best way to stop act active bleeding is uh, direct pressure. So getting something, whatever you have at hand, a piece of material, if, or if you've got a stock first aid kit, there will be trauma dressings in there, and you want to apply pressure straight onto that wound okay. to control the bleeding. However, uh, depending how serious it is, you also want to try and clean the wound as well. Um, if it requires stitches, so a deep gashing wound, applying a pressure, keeping a pressure on there, and uh, seeking med medical attention as soon as possible. Okay. Is the One thing, thing I've seen in all the movies is that someone straps something around their wrist and they it, pull it nice and tight to prevent all the blood flow from going somewhere. Would that happen? In something like a spider bite or <laughs> when do we when do we need to do that you shouldn't do that so we, we okay. speak about envenomation so snake bites and, and spider bites they're injecting a venom into you uh, you don't want to use a tourniquet in that uh, in that instance with regards but specifically for for uh, snakes uh, uh, having them inject the venom into you um, you want to just try and keep keep the wound clean uh, immobilize the the limb the arm or the leg uh, and seek medical attention straight away uh, not all snakes are venomous yeah. um, and not all venomous snakes inject venom into you every time they bite you oh. uh, and it's also very important not to try and catch the snake and bring it with you to the hospital so that they can identify <laughs> if a snake bites you leave it alone okay? just get to exactly. the hospital and <laughs> um, the doctors will be able to recognize what type of venom has been injected uh, by the signs and symptoms that okay. you present so don't do the ramble also try and suck the venom no, out. please don't, don't, don't take a knife and cut your arm to bleed it out, <laughs> suck the venom and spit it out, or use a tourniquet. It's uh, okay. all detrimental. So if your husband's you. doing that, make sure he stops, because it's not okay. <laughs> don't do that at all. It's not a good thing. Um, okay, so one thing that we've got today in the studio is something that I find very fascinating is CPR. Mm -hmm. Who can perform CPR in an emergency situation? So CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It's basically when a person is unresponsive and not breathing. Uh, so for instance, they've had a heart attack and they've collapsed on the floor, like our dummy over here. Um, if you've Don't call me a dummy. <laughs> if you've determined that they're unresponsive and not breathing, yeah. they need a CPR. Um, for somebody who hasn't done a first aid course, uh, you can do compressions only CPR. Okay. So normally people would be, oh my goodness, I don't want to put my mouth on their mouth, I'm not going to give mouth to mouth, and they don't do anything. That person has zero chance of surviving. Okay. Um, however, by just compressing the chest and just by uh, with some techniques that I'll show you now, uh, doing compressions, you're then circulating blood through the body and essentially keeping the, bl the brain yeah. alive. Would you mind showing me that? Because Please. I haven't done my first, I've done, actually I've done one first aid course, okay. I've done the basics, but I've never had to do just the compressions too. And especially for something that you can do at home, I think it's important that everybody learns how to 100%. do this. hundred so percent. This is very, this can essentially be, uh, yeah. save somebody's life. So this is exactly. Rambo. What he did is he went into the bush, he got bitten by a snake, tried to suck it out, his arm fell off, and then now he's now struggling to breathe. hundred percent. Okay. Well, now unresponsive and not breathing. So we would Which determine that. So unresponsive? Unresponsive, so you would go up to your patient if it's safe, so there's the snake has gone away. Yeah. You can now approach your patient, you're gonna tap on his shoulders, hello, you're looking for any signs of hey. life at this point. Nothing, okay. This guy is clearly unresponsive. <laughs> at the same time, we're gonna be looking at his chest. Is, he, is there any breathing? Is the chest going up and down? Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about that look, listen and feel like we used to. Now it's just, if his Visual. chest isn't going up and down, this guy's not breathing. So he's unresponsive, not breathing, he needs CPR. Okay. Shout for help. The only the, you can do CPR for only so long. However, if you get paramedics on the way, this guy yeah. can get uh, sure. further further care. A nice trick in the new age is to make sure you put your phone on loudspeaker and 100%. phone 911 so that you can carry on. You doing can the even thing. phone 911 in South Africa with uh, on our cell phones yes. or 10177 or any of the emergency numbers that you can uh, okay. look up easily. So then what? He's not breathing, and we've seen that he's not. Yeah, nothing's happening. Good. You've called for help. You're now going to put your hands oh, in the right position. No exactly. So we want to put our hands in the center of the chest, okay, on the, the lower half of your of your chest. The, okay, cavity. Uh, so yes. wh which hand? Whichever one. Do, okay. Whichever one. So, so you're going right. to use the, the base of your hand right on the sternum over there. Okay, so my base, my hand on the sternum. And your other hand on top. Other hand on top. Interlock the fingers, fantastic. Uh, shoulders above the chest. Oh, and wow. you're just going to push down. You're pushing down five to six centimeters. Okay, so sure. that's it. If you take a match uh, a matchbox and you flip it uh, on its on its on side, top, on its side, you'll, that's about five to six centimeters. Aren't you scared of breaking the person's rib cage? What happens if you don't do this? He dies. He okay. stays dead, exactly. Okay. So by doing this, you're essentially going to keep blood circulating. How many times should we do it? Um, you're doing it at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. So that's almost so fast, two, fast. two per second. So, exactly. Sure. And you're pushing down uh, exactly at five to six centimeters and you carry on doing that. Don't worry if you haven't done first aid training. Don't worry about doing mouth to mouth. However, if it's essential to go on a first aid course sure. uh, and they will teach you how to do uh, 30 compressions, two breaths in okay. between and uh, assessing pulses and things. Sure. And you carry on going to this until a medical professional arrives. Please, yeah, don't stop. 
Okay. And uh, so on a side note, with regards to snake uh, bites, uh, certain snakes like a cobra paralyzes you and it stops, your, it stops mm. you breathing. If that has happened to a, a colleague of yours or a partner and, and they, you're doing CPR, you actually, it's recommended to carry on CPR for longer than you would normally carry on CPR, sure. uh, you would normally do CPR Just until paramedics arrive. Because yeah. that also keeps the blood flowing around the body exactly. and keeps the brain alive. Exactly. Fantastic. Uber, thank you so much. I've learned a lot today just in the short space of time. I appreciate it. Now we can all do CPR in some small way or form. Now after the break, we share some family safety tips for when you are traveling on holiday. And it's time to wrap up Movember. We'll be right back after this. Give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, it's holiday season time, and there are many things we need to keep in mind to ensure we have a safe and enjoyable trip with our families. To keep us sharp and prepared, we have Health and Safety Officer uh, Delmaine Fanika to share some tips with us. Now, Delmaine, welcome to The Loft. Thank you for having me. Sure. So children are a big thing to travel with, especially because all the rest of the passengers go, no, another baby on my aeroplane. How does this work? Let's talk a bit about general safety tips when traveling with children, particularly if you're going on a road trip. On a road trip? Well, let's start at the back seat because that's where the kids are sitting. Okay, they should be there. So they should be there, hey? Not on the front seat. Although we do get those that don't yes, pay I'm attention sure. to the mm. laws. But... I guess to start off would be to just check your back seat. Okay. Your car seat, give your car seat or the booster seat a boost and making sure that it's properly installed 100% uh -huh. correctly because 8 out of 10, they are not properly installed. Sure. What, what does it mean to be Which, not properly installed? Because I think parents are going, how do I know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just check it. Like the grips, if the grips are tight, I mean, this is before you put the kid in, in the, the chair, yeah. in the chair, that is. So just making sure that the grips are on tight and also that it's fastened to the back seat. Mm. Very, 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 <laughs> yeah, yes, okay. very firm. And I mean, um, if it's elevated, boosted up, I mean, you check in your rear mirror if you can see Often. because mm. yeah, that, that is very important to see if you can see the, the seat as well because when the kid is at the back yeah. in the seat, you want to see them checking out what they are doing because mm -hmm. we all know where those curious hands can go. Yeah. <laughs> and I think also most importantly as well, when, once you've done that, just move on because now you're still at the back, busy checking all of that. Um, just move on, check for any choking hazards because mm. I mean, knowing those curious hands, they exactly. want to go anywhere and just check for loose knobs that could potentially c come off or mm. that any loose coins we all know we get in the car shopping get in a car just throw in the change mm -hmm. check for loose coins because that can also cause like choking yeah and sometimes also things like when you when you leave the windows down while you're driving it blows some stuff around so check regularly because i'm sure while check. you drive other things might also fly into the seat itself and babies can pick that up and put it in their mouths very mm. much very much so i mean that would be the next step i mean to check your child safety locks yes on your doors and on your windows making sure that when your curious hands go there you know it's properly and it's and it's not yeah. for the kids obviously for them it's secured and um I guess that's the most important thing for sure. you when you when you travel with kids at the mm. back seat. Exactly. Yeah. But what about something like flying? I've heard there's a lot of legalities around carrying birth certificates and things like that. I didn't know this. Yeah, let's move on to that, eh? Um actually on the first of June twenty fifteen, Department of Home Affairs, they're very strict on this law. Mm -hmm. So if you travel with a minor you will have to be in a position of position of an uh, unabridged birth <sighs> certificate. So what that means is, on the birth certificate, it's actually different to a normal birth certificate. Yes. Because both parents, their ID numbers are on, on there. there. Yeah. Ah, okay, so if somebody else is carrying the kid, you'll know that it's not meant to be with these people. Yeah. Let's move on to that. So if it's not your kids and you actually that you travel with, um, the laws actually state that you should have a copy of the birth certificate. Sure. Furthermore should have a copy of both parents' IDs. Wow, with you while you're traveling? Yes, yes. Oh, word. And furthermore, <laughs> just the contact numbers on there, um, both parents' contact numbers mm, as well, mm. and 
an affidavit. Sure. To, Some, to something say. people might not know. This, so the affidavit, obviously, sorry uh, to yeah. interrupt you there, but the yeah. affidavit would have been something to say, I have given permission Fish. to these people that to carry correct. the child along that in airplane. That is correct, yeah. Okay. That is correct. The unabridged certificate will actually cost you 75 rand. Okay. The uh, Department of Home Affairs, they issued them um, before March 2013. Okay. They've issued, so the child was born before then, but after that. You will have to make Go a trip. Go and apply for one. You'll have to make a trip Ooh. there. Ooh, and everyone's yeah. regretting that. But <laughs> I'm right in saying a mine is anybody younger than the age of 18. That so is you correct. Get, if your son or your daughter is currently 17 or just under 18 or below, you have to You'll go and get those certificates from apply. the Department of Home Affairs. Yeah, and actually on schools, they're getting even more strict to comply to these laws. Sure. And yeah, that is what, I mean, that is what we do. Our the yeah. health and safety officers, we equip them you know get this in order this is your checklist so when the kids travel go on tour this is what the parents need to provide you with sure all the legalities to comply to i've learned something new i think a lot of parents are panicking because they've got their <laughs> visas and everything sorted out but now they must carry those certificates and a too. Beach birth certificate wow fantastic that is. i've learned a lot thank you so much if you have any other final tips make sure you guys go and find you guys online i'm sure and ask all the questions you guys can get in touch yeah we from environing so you can catch our health and safety tips on there Whew. also while traveling um i guess the most important part would be to be sun smart as mm -hmm. well as mentioned before on the show um, good sunblock um, some shades as yes. well getting fashionable maybe a hat <laughs> for the kids as well they would love that so that would be my final tip then. amazing thank you so much those will keep them nice and safe but I'll tell you what will keep your kids quiet is a delicious ice cream sami won't of it of course <laughs> absolutely ice cream sandwiches are the cure to everything wouldn't you say, say? <laughs> okay absolutely. so those look amazing oh, yeah so they're all gooey inside so they're crisp on the outside yeah, gooey inside. just perfect Look, Amazing. Tap. So what's, what are we doing now? So now the ice cream is really set nicely. Okay. And it is really hot in here, so it's nice and so, melty. <laughs> yeah, so it should be a little bit firmer than that. And my tip is often to, especially having lots of guests, is to pre-scoop mm. and then just put it on a baking tray and keep it in the freezer. And then when Absolutely. everybody's ready and you're ready to scoop, and then my especially for the kids. My trick is always to take that, that baking tray and put it in the freezer. That looks amazing. Mm -hmm. put, the, put that baking tray in the freezer ahead of time so it's frozen exactly, as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're extra, extra, like, Extra precautious. Safe. Against exactly. the, the melt the of the hot ice cream. summer days. And I mean, it looks beautiful, even if it exactly, does melt. It's yeah. going to taste the same. Exactly, it's absolutely yeah. delicious. So it's kind of the new cone, I suppose. Hey, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, instead of cones, and the kids will line up and for And what these. else could you use, do you think, for the meringue? As a, as you could actual... use uh, ready-made biscuits, beautiful Ooh, ginger ginger biscuits. Um, if you want square, obviously, tennis biscuits. Um, brandy snaps would and, be great. And those yummy caramel what things from Woolworths, what are, are they, they called again? Strip. Stroop waffle, 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 waffles. Waffles. <laughs> Those, Those would be amazing. What they, call, yeah. they taste amazing. <laughs> so before the ice, any more ice cream melts, then we can just scatter berries. berries, whatever berries you want. So just like you said, berries, berries, berries are beautiful and in exactly. season at the moment. Just scatter them all over and here. And because it's Christmas, I've done something great. I love cherries and I've dipped them into melted white chocolate. How cool is and that? And then put them in, pop them in the freezer and they'll also be frozen. And it's so, so simple exactly. and it's like one of those things that your guests are going to be like, ooh, they'll what go, did you do? And ah, oh, and ah, oh, you're so fabulous. And it just looks so beautiful. Look at the cover. Look at that. It's an exact replica some blueberries wouldn't you say perfect stunning there and this go. magazine is going we're going to give this away and it's one we're going to give away one of Oops. three one year subscriptions all you have to do is sms the keyword taste to three three seven to eight sms's cost one hundred and fifty, and t's and c's apply you want to get your hands on this because you can make this otherwise <laughs> you can go to the you can go to the website exactly <laughs> you can but as well packed packed full of goodies for christmas and I, holiday time. i don't know how it would be possible to eat this if you had a big mo or like a beard or something oh no or over. Really? So the best thing to do <laughs> is to get rid of it Danilo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to demonstrate how that works a little bit later on. Don't you worry, it's snacks for later on. Now, to all the men out there who supported Movember by growing a luscious lip sweater, we salute you. But the month has finally come to an end, and it's time to groom. Today, we're joined all the way from the UK by award-winning hairdresser Kelly Greening to share some grooming tips with us. Now, Kelly, welcome to The Loft. It's good to have you. Nice to be here. Thank so, you. So, Kelly, you, as, as, a, as a lady getting involved in male grooming, but particularly beards, yes. how did that happen? Um, for me, it's been part of my heritage in the UK. Um, it's been a massive increase in fashion and style lately, but there's a lot of men out there, especially five years ago, who didn't know how to groom, didn't know what to do with it, and were just starting to grow these crazy, haphazard, <laughs> hipster beards. So it was interesting to get involved in that side from hairdressing and try and teach men how to 
enjoy and look after what they've actually been given. So. I love it. It's almost like he looked at us going like, oh, you're saying that I have a, I have a hipster <laughs> beard? Is that what you're trying to tell me? But I think it's quite an interesting thing. And now that Movember's come to an end, a lot of guys have got these mows and don't know what to do with them. And the ladies mm. don't know what to do with their men. They're saying, should you continue to grow it? How do I keep it groomed? Mm. What are some of the basic tips when it comes to grooming a beard? I think for the mainstay, there is a subdivide between women who love beards and women who don't like beards. I think if you actually look at the women that don't like beards, it's more a subversion of they don't actually like smelly beards. So <laughs> it starts off with, does it smell nice? Does it feel nice? Do I want that near my face? Mm -hmm. um, especially when they first start to grow out, they're very stubbly. How do you maintain that? How do you get it soft again? So yeah. it's teaching a man how to groom it and also a woman okay. enabling a man to help him to groom so it I'm as well. Does it smell? It smells it smells okay. It smells okay. All we need to do is groom it. I think it's <laughs> all we have to do. So we can get going with this. What are we going to be doing with his beard today? Absolutely. If we look at his face, um, he actually spoke to me and he's been cheating. This is not a month's regrowth. So yes, that's three. <laughs> three months. So there's a lot of cheating men. So this is Johnny. He's going to... We're looking basically um, like haircuts. Um, what was trying to do is actually look at men's face shapes and look at what they're doing in a job and who they are and a personality and expressing that in their beards. Mm. So if you look at his beard shape, he's got very short cropped hair on the side um, and it's elongating his face outwards here. So yes. what we discussed, Johnny and I, is if I look at his face shape, he's got amazing cheekbones. His beard is very soft in texture here, but it's very coarse and wizardry here. So we're grooming it down, we're fading it down, and then we're giving him more of a gentry regal style. We use the word regal <laughs> in his mustache and area, and he's actually got a very nice smile under there, but he looks quite angry right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so are you looking forward to this? You're a bit nervous. Have you ever groomed your hair before? I have not, no. Ever? So this is the first time you've groomed your facial hair? I've just let it grow wild, and um, this is going to be the first time scissors have ever touched it. Okay, well, we're going to continue with doing this later on in the show. You guys will see the final product uh, right here on Afternoon Express after the commercial break, so you don't go anywhere. Fresh Pack. Goodness comes naturally. Welcome back to a Motivational Monday, right here on Afternoon Express. So the festive season is around the corner and it's almost that time of year again when the roads are going to be buzzing with vehicles in a hurry to get to their holiday destination or back. Now the beaches and public pools are packed with people all, from all ages and with this in mind, it's good to know the importance of being mindful of danger. Joining us in the loft to chat about road safety as well as keeping your family safe at the beach or pool is health and safety expert Brent Lawrence. Welcome to the loft. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Brent, everyone's going to be traveling along the roads and about a year ago, no, it's more like two or three years ago, I was uh, one of the witnesses to a terrible accident that happened with a family and a lot of accidents happen on our roads, particularly during the holiday season for many different reasons. Um, let's begin with taking a long road trip. What are some of the basic safety requirements that we need to remember when taking a long trip with the family? Well, currently in, in South Africa, um, they are busy with roads everywhere, roads everywhere. So if you want to take a long trip, make sure that you um, plan way ahead. Um, the night before you are going to take a road trip, um, sleep well, um, rest well. Mm. Make sure that your, your car is in a good condition, check your tires, you know, K53 K thing. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your uh, kids are, have, have uh, boosters, um, that are safe and, and uh, properly, properly yeah. um, um, buckled in. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and then um, use a GPS. If you have a GPS, use a GPS wherever you go. Um, as I said, plan, plan ahead. Yeah. Um, if there is like a detour you have to go through, you can use GPS to get to your, to your, to your destination mm -hmm. safer. Um, I think the best time to, to uh, travel is, uh, if you're going to travel long distance, is actually at night. Okay. Um, very less uh, traffic. Um, you don't want to like stuck, be stuck after eight hours of, 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 of driving into four, four o'clock traffic yeah. at, the, at the major city. Plus also the sun beating down on the vehicle yeah, puts strain yeah. on it and your family and you, fatigue, etc. So we'll talk about how to keep your vehicle safe when it comes to lights uh, and stuff like that. But fatigue, I think, is a big one. Um, mm -hmm. I know as a guy, a lot of the time you want to take control and want to look after your family and want to mm -hmm. make sure that you're driving them carefully to the destination itself. But we're very unaware of our own fatigue when it comes to driving. Um, what are some of the things that we need to do and be aware of? How do we know when we've reached that point where actually it's time to pull over? Because I know I've seen gents who will drive their cars 
actually doze off and wake up and be like, no, it's fine, I'm awake now, I'm fine. Yeah. When do we know it's time to pull over? Well, first thing, the first sign is if you're tired. If you, if you can't keep your eyes open, if you're uh, dizziness, uh, sweaty, uh, sweaty palms, oversteering, um, if you have any uh, sort of, uh, any of that symptoms, then rather take a, take a rest. If you're gonna take a long trip, the rule is that every two hours, um, stop, walk around your car, go, uh, stop at the service station, go get, get to some cooling, get to some energy aid. Mm. Uh, energy drinks, um, get, to, uh, get some, uh, um, just take a rest for about half an hour if you're in a hurry to get to, to where you are. Um, yeah. But if you, if, you, if you experience any of that um, symptoms, uh, especially the fatigue one, mm. um, then stop. Um, rather rather arrive, late, arrive late than dead on time. That's a saying. That, true. No, yeah. actually very, very true. And I think a lot of people take that for granted. Uh, something I have to ask you though, however, this drinking and driving has become a big thing. Um, and I know you want to talk to us a bit about also taking any form of drug, whether it be some kind of antihistamine or not. But but what about carrying something like a coffee or a sandwich in your hand while you're driving? Oh yeah, um, you always find payday, and people like have this big pizza while eating. <laughs> okay, I've never seen that. Okay, <laughs> I've seen, I'm, I'm on the road all the time, so you like see this big people, big pizza, and eating it, and then not constantly on the road, yeah. or um, they have these huge mugs and drinking and shouting the children and and things like that. So anything that takes your attention away from the road, um, take that away from when you when you okay. when you drive. Um, as you said, the drugs thing as well. Um, the sound of the year. Uh, it's um, high fever. People took a lot, take a lot of antihistamine um, and makes you drowsy. Um, so there is uh, um, um, drugs out there that is antihistamine free. Mm. That you can't take if you're going along a long road, you're traveling. You can't take such drugs to help you out to to drive safer. Sure. A lot of families want to get to their destination as fast as possible. You know, they want yeah. to get to that holiday quickly. And I've noticed it's become a real big trend of people uh, overtaking and somebody moving into the yellow lane. Mm. I want to know by the book. How legal is moving into the yellow lane to allow somebody to pass you? It is legal to go move into yellow lane. Legal or illegal? Illegal to sure. move into yellow lane. Uh, it's a custom area that people do do, do it, uh, but it is legal to move into your lane. You can't get a fine for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also very dangerous. Um, so you have to actually wait until you get perfect line or until somebody um, Move off. Moves off the road. You always find the trucks. Um, they normally have like a sticker that says no yellow line um, yes. because it's legal. And now people see a truck, they're behind the truck, they are in the alley, mm. they would take the truck, they want to get past. Uh, and so it goes for slow drives as sure. well, they want to get past. Exactly, and I've heard the reason that is because you don't know what the terrain is like after the yellow line. Yeah. So if you do move into the yellow line, you hit a slight bit of sand, you could spin out the vehicle and that could cause a lot more damage than you needing to get to your destination an extra five minutes earlier. Packing is also a big thing when it comes to vehicles because that accident that I witnessed was such a dangerous accident. First of all, because the kids weren't buckled in and they were all flung from the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And second of all, if there are objects in that car that are not strapped in correctly or of, of a weird shape, can fly around the vehicle and actually cause damage whether you buckled in or not. How do we make sure that we pack our vehicle wisely not only to shove everything into the back to make sure that we have more space to sleep yeah uh, if, if you are gonna if you are gonna pack stuff uh, try to pack most of the things in the boot um, uh, you can clamp them down it's like um, clamp belts you can have to, to clamp it down have you, have you ever seen a pit fly <laughs> I haven't I don't know why you're laughing about that I've never so, <laughs> but there's actually uh, instances where uh, they have the pits they, they buckle in the child but they don't buckle in the pit yeah and uh, stop the car uh, fast and then the pit just flies through the window or, or to the next seat and it's distracting no, so if you have sure. pits you can you can get the pit cage and you can buckle the pit uh, pit uh, cage in as well really yes okay. you can yeah that is absolutely recommended and when it comes to obviously big big objects and big foreign objects make sure that they are secured correctly yeah. in the back yeah. all right any other final safety tips that you have for for our viewers because i mean there are many when you're going on road trips so they're very dangerous places to be in yeah uh, um also like if you if you're going to uh, on a long trip you're going to a foreign city okay um just do some research on, uh, research on the city uh, where, where crime is concerned uh, check out the hijack spots yes um make sure you don't take routes that will endanger your mm. your family yeah um, the, um, normally, most maps have uh, resting points and safe resting points, like garages you can go to. Point. Uh, but if you do go and you feel and, and you have to go to a rest stop, uh, not, not, I'm not talking about the garage, but normal, uh, normal, uh, mm. some other rest stop, and you feel it's not safe, then rather don't stop there. Yeah. Rather go where you feel it is safe, especially when you have a family, you have a wife and kids in the car. So. Exactly. Yeah, okay, let's move our attention now to pools and beaches. Uh, we've spoken a bit about sun care, etc. But there are other dangers when it comes to going to public pools or to pool spaces and beaches. Mm. Uh, let's talk about pools. What are the safety tips we should keep in mind when going to something like a pool? Well, a pool. If you, if you have a pool at house, uh, at your house, and you have kids, uh, first thing is uh, teach your kids how to swim. If you don't have to swim, then teach yourself uh, get some um, swimming lessons as well. Mm. Um, try to erect the fence. Uh, it's about 1.2 meters. 
high and the gap's about 10 centimeters, so it won't squeeze through. I see. Yeah. If you are finished swimming, don't leave the toys and noodles in, in the pool because what actually happens is the child comes back and wants it and then fall into the pool. Mm. So uh, make sure that if you're done swimming, take everything out of the pool. All kids uh, must be supervised uh, by adult, even if the child can swim properly, um, uh, make sure that you uh, supervise the, 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 the child. When you go to a public pool, uh, for example, like a resort or like a you know, like a public pool boss or a place like yeah. that. There's about 400 or 500 families there. So imagine like 120 kids in the pool and it's like going crazy. Mm. And there's cases already where children has drowned and nobody knows the child drowned. Um, and the child is laying there uh, um, in the pool, the, um, no one can died see. and nobody can see because everybody's jumping yeah. around. Uh, so don't just take it with granted your child is safe and they yeah. can go swim. Um, check up on your child. Make Absolutely. sure that you are there with, with your child. I remember my brother also, there was, a, there was a piece of glass also at the bottom of the pool. My brother was playing around, also cut his foot open on glass, mm -hmm. had to go for stitches. So it's important to stay close to your children because, like you said, they might be in pain and under the water not know about it. Yeah. What about beaches? Beaches, um, I think people that live in coastal areas, um, we uh, kind of think that we're born to swim, but it's not the case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those okay, currents so and those waves, yeah, my friend. It's mm -hmm. heavy, yeah. So um, also go for swimming lessons. Uh, watch out for rip currents. If you are on a rip current, um, stay calm, uh, signal for help, or swim paddle towards uh, um, from, um, paddle to the uh, to, to, to the shore. Um, once you're out of the rip current, uh, get out of there. Um, mm -hmm. Try to swim with places where there is uh, um, uh, lifeguards. Uh, I just want to mention one thing: that sharks sure. is not friendly. Okay, <laughs> there's a there's a, uh, a video going around of this guy petting a shark. Okay, Just don't sharks, do that. Yeah, <laughs> our sharks in South Africa, they will, they will bite you. They will come and they, <laughs> they will, will come yeah. after you. I guess so, something about rip currents, though, that I've heard before is that to make sure that you don't try and swim against the current to get back to where you is you wanted to be, go with the flow of the waters. You're going to tire yourself out, and then eventually also run out of run out of energy and, and, and oxygen. So go with the rip current and try and make your way towards. Let the ocean take you to the sea. It's not everyone thinks that it's going. The, the water will drive you back deeper and deeper into the ocean, and it won't because if those currents are available, they will take you towards a safe spot. So go with that. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. What other safety tips can we remember by being on the beach uh, and going to the beach beach areas? Um, don't swim drunk. If you have alcohol in you, don't swim drunk. If you are going to swim, swim with somebody. Um, uh, once again, don't leave your children alone. Let um, let them uh, be supervised. You can even stand on the shore while the children goes in. Okay. Um, then, uh, uh, very important also, like if you don't litter on the beach, um, like you said, you just mentioned now the glassing with your brother. Um, you're not allowed to bring alcohol on the beach. It's illegal. And also, not allowed, if, if you break glass, you're supposed to speak up if it's a cooling bottle or anything sure. like that. People can um, cut themselves uh, sure. and hurt themselves. Lots to remember. I hope everybody in South Africa is taking notes mm -hmm. as much as they can. I'm busy. Gonna, probably going to rewatch this on YouTube later on. So thank you so much for chatting to us on the couch and sharing all these tips with us. Thank you very much. South Africa, we're going for a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to show you how to groom those sexy beards of yours. Don't go anywhere. Express yourself. Clicks. Feel good. Pay less. Troubled by irritated and scaly skin? Try Dermalex Psoriasis. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. It's a motivational Monday, and all of our guests are eagerly awaiting to see what this beard is going to look like today. Kelly Red is our barber in the loft today, and you're going to be showing us exactly what's been going on. So what have we done since we last caught up with Mikhail? So basically, we've tamed him for his woman. So we have made him more approachable. You can smell him. Since Smell, he smells genteel. It smells like Yet cinnamon. Is it cinnamon? Is she? It's quite it's manly. She's, he's going, <laughs> like, I actually don't even know. Okay, cool. It's, so we've put a bit of uh, beard oil in there, so it's a little bit more softer. So you must be using a beard oil every day. You've okay. been told about this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, washing it, conditioning it. You've got to teach it to be good for okay. you. Yeah. You're welcome to continue doing the last few touches. I want to understand different types of hair when it comes to facial hair because, you know, I, I'm, I don't grow facial hair. It's just never a thing of mine. I've never ever grown facial hair. It's not in my family. It's not a thing. But mm. you get different types of hair that grow out of your face. What are they and how do we treat them differently? <laughs> So, if I look at your face, you will probably grow a beard and then lose the top of your hair one day. I'm really? Sorry. Yes. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Um, there's different types of beards, sorry. <laughs> there's different okay. types of hair and beards. You, you generally will get a curlier hair, a finer hair. If, I, if you were to grow a beard and you have patches around here, we will groom your beard to connect. So, it's like growing it and brushing it to cover small sections. Mm -hmm. If you have a tighter kind of curl on your face um, or if you have red hair as well, you'll tend to have a very sensitive skin. So you actually really need to go to a barber and, and get guidance and training on how to shave in the correct way. Ah. That's why you see a lot of 
ingrowing hairs, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. from a dirty blade down to the way and the angle you're shaving the hair. So there's a lot more to it than at home with your disposable razor mm -hmm. and um, a poor quality shaving cream. Okay, yeah. so I want to grow a beard and I want to get this thing nice and sorted. What are some yeah. daily tips that I need to do? How do I daily look after my beard? Daily look after, um, very basics because men, if you give them more than three things to do, we are not multitaskers. I'm not a man, by the way. I don't know why I said that, but you guys <laughs> are multitaskers. So you need to... <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking like this. <laughs> but you need to exfoliate the face every day. Same as a, as a lady, but you need to exfoliate so you don't get ingrowing hairs, basic and simple. After about two weeks, it's going to get extremely itchy and you're going to have patches and you're going to feel like a homeless man. So you're going <laughs> to brush, get through it, wear a balaclava and push through another four weeks. After that, you're going to brush it every day, oil it, shampoo, condition it and that's it. And then come see a barber once a month. Just my for word, idea. my word. Lots of effort that goes into a beard like this. Okay, so we're basically done. I think you look... You look okay. Do you feel good? <laughs> well, there's no mirrors here, so I don't know what I look like. So. Well, do you feel? Do you feel like your beard is nice and soft, and you don't even even touched it yet? It feels lighter. Oh. And I feel I feel regal. I feel noble. <laughs> he looks pretty good too. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us in the loft today. What thank would the style be called, by the way? Does it have Mr. a name? Mr. Regal. Well, what would you call it, Johnny? I'll go Van Dyke. You call it that? I'll go Van Dyke. Van Dyke. Yeah. And other different styles of like, what is the most trendy style for beard at the moment, so we can know. Ooh. Uh, it depends on your stylist or your barber. Um, I'm going for a hickster, okay. which is a little bit more of a rough redneck hipster vibe, so it's a little bit more looser. Johnny's going very angular. What are you going for at the moment? I'm actually going for the angular girl. Angular girl. <laughs> I'm going for the angle, just to suit his face, actually, just to bring it more regal, keep that moustache going, and uh, just some more, um, yeah. some more belt so in the front. Dapper, so I just want to dapper um, it out, yeah. yeah. What's going on with the end of your beard? What is that called? Mine is the, oh, it was a rockabilly situation that we were okay. in, so it's, uh, I'm on the sideburns now. Right, fantastic. Okay, looks really cool. Kelly, would you mind joining me over to the couch? Yeah. I want to go and feed you. Uh, this looks absolutely amazing. We'll take a photo of it and post it online for the rest of you in South Africa. And this is almost time for us to say goodbye. So Kelly, you want to come and join me? Yeah. I, he I heard you like meringues and ice cream, don't you? Uh, I can't resist. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks delicious. Guests, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We absolutely appreciate you being here, sharing some safety tips. You, South Africa, have a good afternoon. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Good night and happy eating. Good night. Yum. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, on World AIDS Day, we're joined by performer and social activist Peter Dirk Eis and singer Yolanda Yawa. Another Feel Good Production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.